to show you our solution in task number five, two balloons. It is known that air in two partially inflated balloons will flow in different directions depending on the initial balloon's volumes. We have to investigate this phenomenon. Let's first take a look on these two videos. The initial volumes seem to be quite similar. However, in the first case, the smaller balloon is pumping the bigger one, and in the second one, the two balloons are becoming equal. So, it is of note that the air, flow, uh, air will flow from the higher pressure to the smaller pressure, and therefore, the pressure inside the balloon will be a, a key parameter in our system. When I try to pump a balloon, firstly, it is very hard. Then, it is becoming easier. The balloon is becoming bigger and bigger. When it's very large, the surface is very stiff, and it's hard to pump it again. We describe the pressure inside the balloon, depending on their sizes. Assuming that the balloon is spherical, and also that the pressure inside depends only on volume. And we, it turned out, that in small balloons, the pressure will be high because the pressure decreases with rate of squirreling and additionally, in big balloons, we obtain high pressure because the pressure will be proportional to the stiffness of the surface. What is obvious, what will happen if we don't have the equal pressures in the system? However, this condition do not describe what we have what will happen if we have the same pressures in the balloons. The point is that with small deviations in pressure, the system has to come back to its equilibrium. So it turned out that in case of two small balloons, when we deflate only one of them, it will generate a much higher pressure and will pump the other balloon. And in case of two big balloons, when we smallly deflate one, it will generate smaller pressure and it will be pumped again. So, to derive on which uh, volumes we have this uh, two situation, we have to assume that volume uh, is constant. Why volume is constant? We, we estimated how the pressure will compress maximally in a balloon and it turned out that would be about 2%, as you will see in a minute. Okay, so... Okay, so... Okay. So, the next step in our research would be to determine the stiffness of the scrubber. To think about the physics of it, we have to look at the molecular structure of the rubber. Rubber is built of chains of polymers connected in nodes. Between these nodes, single molecules can oscillate freely without interaction with other molecules. And they oscillate with temperature. These oscillations cause the movement of one molecule's end. In case of unexpected state of rubber, the movement of these, uh, all these part uh, molecules do not uh, affect the movement of component because they are random. However, if we expand the rubber in one direction, it will be more probable for the molecule to come back to its equilibrium rather than to go further. And because of that, the certain force occurs. To somehow calculate this force, we have to use a personal thermodynamics for the rubber. We assume that because there is no interaction between molecules, the internal energy depends only on temperature. And the, the internal energy, uh, the change of it, will, will equal the heat delivered uh, to the uh, to rubber. We accept that the process is reversible, the volume work, and also the work connected with stretching the rubber. However, we know that for many works, for, for instance, from the trellis work, that the volume do not, constant, uh, do not change greatly but with elongation. And because of that, we erase the volume part. Also, our process is quite slow and we, the, the temperature do not change considerably and because of that we also assume that it is an isothermic process. And with that we can derive a conclusion for the force, uh, um, the, for the force.
or stretching the rubber in case of isotropic process. So if this force will be proportional to temperature and the change of entropy with radius of the balloon. The entropy somehow describes the arrangement of the molecules. So in case of unexpanded state, the molecules will be orientated somehow randomly. However, if we expand balloon, they will be more oriented and because of that, the entropy would be more uh, lower. To calculate it, we use a statistical definition of entropy and additionally, we took uh, the probability of our mo molecules, how they will be distributed. If we have a stiff, uh, the, the soft material, when it's uh, not expanded, it has more um, possible states to make rather than one that, that it is expanded. And so we assume that the uh, distribution of length in one coordination of these molecules is the Gaussian distribution. And integrating this distribution, we, uh, from, the, from that we derive at this conclusion, this equation for entropy. Knowing the elongation of the rubber in uh, all three directions, we can derive the finally the change in entropy with elongation respectively to a constant. So we derived the force that showing the rubber, how it looks like, and also how the pressure inside the column will look like previous. And from that, we can finally derive the equation for the pressure inside, in, uh, inside the balloon, changing with the elongation of the radius. However, we can see clearly here that there is a de decreasing in pressure, which is inconsistent with our preliminary observations. So to check it, we, derive, uh, we come up with an experiment. We take an uh, oil balloon, we attach it up to uh, Manometer, the water manometer, and looking at the differences of height in pool of water, we look what's the pressure inside the bottle. We found a compressor. We met with some obstacle during this experiment. Because the pool of water has certain inertia, we, uh, we, have, we had such sinusoidal um, uh, line. And however, we know that the pool of water is a harmonic oscillation, oscillating with dumping. And subtracting the movement of pole of water to this equation, we can derive the pressure inside the balloon. And also, we needed uh, the, 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 uh, the, not to know how the volume is changing in time. And so to do that, we looked through the camera to, for our, to our balloon. We fit it a super uh, ellipsoid to it, and then uh, assuming that the volume is spheroid, we derive the volume. So here you can see the raw data, the experimental the data after subtracting the initial of pool of water, and our fitted theory, and it is a certain inconsistency in the, the last part. It is because in a long extension, our assumption do not hold well because the certain stiffness occur in the rubber. I will introduce you two sources of this stiffness. Because in a high entanglement, the molecules more in interact with each other more, there is uh, the, the force uh, is generated is higher. For instance, if the molecules are elongated, in case of unexpected case, do not, they do not have much influence. However, if we expand our molecules, the certain stiffness occurs due to this fact. Additionally, in unexpanded state, rubber is quite isotropic. When you extend it, the crystallization occurs, which additionally causes a stiffness. So, to have an analytical solution with this correction, we take the polynomial correction from the work of Yang Wuling to rubber balloons. And you can see clearly that with this correction, the pressure is increasing. We fitted the theory to the several balloons and fitted pretty well. So we made a five experiments with the same type of balloon. And here you have, can see this uh, pink uh, area. It's a standard deviation of these measurements. And from, from these measurements, we could uh, derive the coefficients which would describe our rubber. And with these coefficients, knowing how exactly the 
that was how the pressure changes is going, we can finally derive the diagram, what will be the flow, direction of the flow into the balloons, uh, uh, depending on the niche of balloons. So because of the symmetry of the problem, because we have two the same balloons, I will talk about the target. The lines symbolize the, the fields where the pressure inside the balloons are equal. However, the red lines when the state is stable and the blue when it's unstable. So if that means that if in red field the small balloon will pop the bigger one and in the green, green field, the big balloon will come to smaller. We conducted another experiment to check whether our theory predicts as well. We take, attached the second balloon to our system. We made a photo of the balloons. Then we released the air and we made a second photo. However, we have to keep in mind that the different uh, balloons are not the same. I mean, if we are using one balloon several at a time, it's wearing out, and because of that, we'll take, for each experiment, we will take a new balloon. So here you can see a 72 experiments for each the pair of two balloons was taken. And you can, the red point symbolize the, 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 the flow from smaller to bigger balloon, and the, in, in the reverse, in the case of uh, blue, uh, green eyes. So to sum up, we described the qualitatively why the pressure is speaking small and big balloon. We, uh, we uh, explained the forces of occurrence by molecular structural the rubber. We derived the, the pressure equation. We changed it experimentally, and we finally derived a graph which answers the question. Okay, thank you. Have to stop thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shirley Jun from Singapore, and now I will pose problem 5 to balloons. So, moving on to the clarification questions, to the reporter, um, can we go to slide 16? You show a graph of, I think, pressure against time. Yeah, so, oh, volume, okay. So, is this a typical experiment run data? Can you repeat the question, please? Um, is this one of your experiment results or this graph? Yes, it's one of my experiments. So you inflate uh, across, say, 0 to 6 liters, right? The unit is liters. Um, what, what is the unit for volume? Okay, so this, this was the liters. Okay, thank you, liters. Um, can we go to slide 72 with your face diagram of not, uh, sorry, slide 25, yes. So um, for these balloons, are they the same balloon or are they different balloons for each dot? So Okay, this different balloon from the same package. So they have the same properties. Okay, so different balloons, thank you. Um, can you go to slide 13? 13. Yeah, so this is a theoretical plot of the um of the from the Gaussian distribution, right? So yes. the pressure goes up. Um and okay, thank you. Um, can we go to your earlier qualitative explanation? So, is the cause of the two balloons phenomenon because the pressure radius curve has a increases and decreases and goes up again? Um, yeah, this is essential. Okay, so we have to have this curve, this going down and coming up. Right? To keep, uh, uh, yes, to have these regions. Okay, thank you. Um, can we go to slide 19? 19. You quoted from literature a correction factor. So is this um is there any physical basis for this factor? Can you repeat the question? Uh, is there a physical basis for this correction? Okay, so this is uh, the pre very quick answer, please. We are out of time. Very quick answer. So okay, so this polynomial correction it do not have any physical basis. How oh, these such corrections are widely used by scientists because it's very hard to uh, to derive a theoretical solution for this uh, nominality of okay. the rock. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Move on to preparation.